let's read the last statement of the question which of the following is your your most probable diagnosis so we have to diagnose the condition so the question here is a 35 year old heterosexual patient diagnosed with hiv had history of tonic watery diarrhea colonoscopic biopsy shown as below so here our first keyword is that the person is suffering from the hiv and the second keyword is your watery diarrhea okay so basically if you have immunosuppression in the patient immunosuppressive patient immunosuppressed patient and he has watery diarrhea so the most probable diagnosis is that it the person is suffering from crypto sporidium now this crypto sporidium generally is an acid fast parasite acid fast parasite and it is seen inside the cell it is intracellular it is intracellular but extra cytoplasmic it is not seen in the cytoplasmic it is away from the cytoplasm so it is intracellular but extra cytoplasmic uh, organism or we can say the parasite now if we just uh, talk about this particular uh, its life cycle basically so its infection uh, in human beings is generally caused by cryptosporidium parvum okay this is the parasite that most commonly infects the human being the infective stage uh, before that i should talk about the mode of infection it is acquired from the animals okay and it is acquired from the human feces okay it can come from the human feces now uh, if we just talk about the principal site of infection the principal site of infection is generally the villi okay the surface of villi of lower small bowel then we have infective stage if we just talk about the infective stage and generally they ask this question actually so oocytes are seen which are seen in the feces okay these are the infective stage and they contain four sporozoites okay so one important thing about this they can immediately infect the person and they do not require uh, like further development okay for the person to person transmission and one more important thing about it it completes its life cycle in one host only and that's why it is known as mono genus now coming to the uh, clinical features of this particular disease that is caused by cryptosporidium so first of all we should consider about the immunocompetent host so in the immunocompetent competent host it is self limiting and you will be seeing the self limiting watery and it does not contain blood so non blooded diarrhea this is one thing the second thing is in these patient this can cause this can cause travelers diarrhea now if we talk about the patient who are in immunosuppressant means in which the immune immunization uh, sorry the immunity is suppressed so immunosuppressed patients may be aids patient we can talk so you will see chronic persistent and profused watery diarrhea now that is going to be the keyword for your answer for this question as well that the chronic persistent and profuse diarrhea in hiv infected patient is seen in case of infection by cryptosporidium okay now due to the involvement of biliary tract it can cause the obstruct obstruction of biliary tract because it causes papillary stenosis okay then it can also called cholecystic icy choli cystitis actually okay so these are the various clinical features which are seen in the case of infection by uh, cryptosporidium now coming to the diagnosis if we just quickly look at the diagnosis 
So the diagnosis of this uh, infection with, with this parasite, if I have mentioned bacteria anywhere, please forgive for that because that is going to be parasite here. So the parasite, fecal examination for small oocyte has to be done. As we have already discussed that the infective stage is your oocyte. So you will be doing the fecal examination for oocyte and you have to see 4 to 5 micrometer diameter of oocyte you can easily see. Modified acid fast and direct immunofluorescence uh, stain and enzyme immun immunoassay can also be uh, used for uh, identification. The most important thing which we can use for identification is the biopsy. Okay, so biopsy will show cryptosporidium at apical surfaces of the intestinal epithelium at the apical surfaces. Okay, and here also in the question also you will be able to see these are present at the apical surfaces of the intestine. Uh, uh, on the villi basically the surfaces of the villi you can see here so why these are present at the apical surfaces because these are extra cytoplasmic but at the same time these are intracellular so they want to be inside the cell but these are extra cytoplasmic as well so if we quickly go through the explanation of this question the organism cryptosporidium species the cryptosporidium hominis may be one of these species okay that can infect the intestine in immunocompromised person that is suffering with AIDS and that can cause diarrhea and diarrhea is basically watery type. Okay, prominent clinical feature is cryptosporidism is, is watery diarrhea and that is self-limited in one to two weeks that is seen in normal patient. But if the patient is suffering from HIV, HIV that means the, the this is going to be chronic. Okay, the watery diarrhea is going to be chronic and for a longer period. Okay. Diagnosis of this condition is dependent on the oocytes which are 4 to 5 micrometer and if you see these in feces then yes you can confirm the diagnosis of cryptosporidium. Other methods are of course immuno, uh, histoimmunology can be helpful in uh, diagnosis of this as well as the biopsy in which you will be seeing these parasites at the apical areas of the uh, it, uh, villi of the small intestine so you can go with this particular thing so here also you will be able to see these are present on the apices of the villi okay so and the oocytes which are seen in the feces these are the oocytes which are seen and they can be more uh, uh, stained with modified acid phosph stain so uh, if you go back to the question the answer to this question is cryptosporidium that is second 